Jermaine Sanders from Warden Brown. Judge Dave King, Joe Washington. David Bond will be praying. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to be in your house. Dear God, I pray that each and every one of us will have open hearts and minds, dear God, to receive your word in and to practice in our everyday life. Dear God, we ask you to bless each and every person that has a role here, dear God, that makes things happen and takes many people and many jobs, dear God, not just walls. This is a bless and encourage all, dear God, to do your work. We especially ask you to be your boss, bless, strengthen, and encourage him, dear God, and give him all the food that he needs in his integrity. Dear Father, we pray for the sick and afflicted, dear God, which many names on our prayer list and many that are sick and afflicted, dear God, we ask your healing mercy upon them. Several families around, dear God, that are breathing. I believe the same in her family now, dear God, and just show them the way, dear God, and be with them. Dear God, if there's lost people here today, dear God, we pray that something will lead in direction to you. Forgive us our shortcomings and our failures, and we pray and we thank you for answering prayer. In your name I pray. Thank you, Dave. All right. Welcome to Sunday school. Your birthdays in the past week. Large 
Mormon. Well, anyway, I was thinking about that. Can you picture that today? Wagon load of pumpkins sitting beside the road with no home in sight? I believe that poor farmer would be on the bruise and end of the stick today. Moral standards have gone. It seems like even good people are tempted nowadays to do wrong. Or verse 16 said, and ask for the old ways. Is it not a good time to ask God to put people back in the old paths? To get back on the old way? Where morals outweigh temptation. Parents, I think at my age, it's a little hard to teach but to remember the old way, even though it's in our mind. And then they middle aged people a little harder now to teach them too. But parents, you that have lived, now's the time to teach. Teach them while they're young and their minds are good and they can catch up. You might go back to this verse today, verse 16. Tell them what it means to go back to the old path. <coughs> there was not going to stand still now, okay? He's not going to leave. Teach your children the right from wrong and more so that they, they get older and they will know. And in the teaching practices, when you teach a child about morals, show them with your life what it means. Let's stay in prayer with the prayer for those Father, we start there. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
started today. Uh, uh, most of the time, uh, when I come back from Ohio, I normally uh, talk a little bit about that trip. So I guess Corey just knew that that's what was going to happen so he could see him show up. He said he'd do the whole Sunday school. But uh, anyway, went to Ohio this week uh, to the mission up there. Uh, we took about a truckload of stuff there, filled uh, Dave's truck up. And uh, they you know, just wanted to tell everybody thanks. They appreciated uh, us taking stuff up there. And uh, what what we go up there for, it's called the Capital City Blitz. And uh, what they do is uh, Thursday and Friday, they, they go out on the street. You get there about 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, uh, Brother Earl, he just calls a bunch of preachers up to preach to us. And we do that till about noontime. So you get some preaching in the morning, and then at night you get some preaching from Earl Ankle. So uh, I'm pretty good this week. Uh, he straightened me out. But, uh, so it's a good time to get some preaching, then we go out about noontime uh, to downtown Columbus and pass out tracks and they preach out on the street and uh, talk to people about the Lord. And uh, up in Ohio, you just never know what you're going to see. I uh, posted some pictures there, and I don't know if y'all seen that one feller that was on the street, but uh, there's a lot, a lot of people up there in that condition. Uh, they actually legalized marijuana in Columbus now, so pretty much you pretty much smell it all through Columbus if you're downtown. That's all you can smell. So people just kind of do whatever they're doing, and uh, a lot of people are just homeless and just don't really care. That's They're content with that. So uh, you know that a lot of people need help in this world, and uh, you know pretty soon it, it eventually come here. I mean it always starts in bigger cities and just works its way down. So uh, yeah, that's why we need to be out doing the work now before it gets here uh, to help try to combat against the evil of this world. But uh, all in all, it's a good trip. Uh, see all kinds of stuff up there. The same. Uh, you got different groups. You got the Mormons. Uh, your hopes, witnesses. Uh, one day I seen a Catholic priest walking down the street in his full Catholic uniform there. So you just never know what you're going to see. And, uh, but it was a good time. The Lord gave us safety. And, uh, Brother Dave Bound, he actually got a chance to lead two people to the Lord while he was down the street, while he was up there. And, uh, normally on Saturdays, uh, the Ohio State uh, plays a team around noontime. This year it was a night game, so we didn't stick around for that. But me and Rodney went over to Virginia Tech yesterday, and uh, well, Rodney passed out some tracks, and <laughs> I just spent the whole game almost just driving around trying to find the affordable parking. <laughs> that wasn't 400 miles away. Uh, I finally got a little party spot, and maybe gave out a few uh, Romans uh, to a few people that was parked farther away than I was. But uh, that was about how that went yesterday. But uh, it's a good day, and uh, I think uh, yesterday went out and knocked some doors uh, in Peterstown, and they'll be doing that again this weekend uh, before the uh, God and Country Rally. So if anybody's interested, uh, they'll be meeting at hometown at 10 next Saturday for that. And uh, also, uh, me and Dave will be going to... Uh, the flea market in Dublin, if anybody wants to help out with that, uh, come on for a few hours or, or stay all day. We'll be over about from 8 to 5 uh, with the three doors box, just talking to people uh, over there at the flea market. So if anybody's available Saturday for that or, or door knocking, still got a lot going on. So uh, I think that's about all I had. We're good to get in the lesson time. And. Uh, <coughs> A little tough this week. Uh, I was on vacation from work this week, so uh, I worked harder this week than I do when I go to work. So uh, I had a lot going on. Uh, it took some time to try to put something together with this lesson. Uh, the thing about this, if, if you're on a set thing, you know, to, to do a book study or a chapter study, uh, you're kind of stuck to that. So you, uh, I, I would probably skip this one because this is a pretty tough chapter. Uh, a lot of studying had to go into this because uh, it's kind of hard to see what was all taking place here. 
But, uh, but we'll be in chapter 4 today. Go ahead and pray and get started. Lord, we thank you for the state you've given us. Just come out to your house here, Lord, just to worship you. And just pray that you'll give us something from your word here, Lord, that might help us and make us a better Christian, Lord. Just uh, thank you for being so good to us, Lord, and your many blessings. And just pray these things in your name. Amen. So, I guess if y'all want to stand up, we'll do the memory verse. For 1 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse number 5. It says, Therefore, judge nothing before time until the Lord comes. We are both to bring the light and hidden things in the darkness. We will make manifest the of the heart, and then shall have man the praise of God. Thank you. Be seated. All right. So we get started in chapter chapter four, verse number one. Look at the first couple of verses here. It says, "Let every man account of us as ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God." Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So I did use the book a little bit for this first part. And uh, at verse number one, it talks about ministers. And uh, what that is, is it's transferred from the word uh, perforates, I guess is how you say it. But what a minister is, is, is actually transferred into a steward or an underroad. Someone that's on a big boat uh, rowing uh, the ship from underneath. So when you think of the word minister today, most of times I think it's like we hear about ordained ministers, and most ordained ministers get privileged parking, and they get certain things, certain you know entitlements. But the word minister here is pretty much the lowest of the low. Uh, it's a Somewhat type of a, maybe a slave or a worker uh, that has been told to do something. And uh, so, you know, if you're a minister of Christ, you're to be a steward or a servant for Christ. Sure. You know, and uh, this church here at Corinthians, apparently they didn't know that. Uh, we'll read on here and see what all happens. But uh, you get to verse 2, it says, Moreover, it's required that stores be found faithful. And uh, oftentimes you go to the, your workplace or something, you might get to a place in your workplace or you see a sign smart says, you know, a certain safety item is required. They're not, they're not suggesting you put on safety glasses. They're saying you have to put them on. Uh, probably because they're based on these workers' comp. Like, We're not doing that again. But, uh, you know, it's required. And the word requirement is not suggesting, it's saying you have to do this. And if you're going to be a good steward, you have to be faithful uh, in everything. And, uh, you know, if, if God's going to use anybody, he's going to use someone who's faithful. Right, yeah. And, uh, it, you know, it don't matter about, you know, you might take one day and you might read you know, 20 chapters. And then if you don't pick your Bible up for two weeks, that don't mean anything. But if you just read one verse, and if you say, I'm going to read one verse a day, and you're faithful to that, God would really have you read one verse a day than to pick your Bible up one time and read 20 chapters and never pick it up for another two weeks. <coughs> now that's the faithfulness God is looking for. And it's important that we are found faithful. And you know, the reason one thing we should be faithful to God is He's faithful to us. Yeah. Uh, you know, think about Jesus going to the cross, you know. He was faithful to going to the cross. You know, He could have called 10,000 angels. He could have said, no, this is enough. But He did. He stayed faithful all the way through until everything or sin, death was paid. And so it's required that we're found faithful. And... Uh, you think about the, the under rower thing that's translated from ministers. You know, imagine if you're not faithful at rowing the boat or you're faithful and you're, you're working together. You know, think about the disaster that would happen, but you have to be found faithful and a worker for Jesus Christ. <coughs> uh, now we'll get into 
So uh, this was the tough part. I had to do some digging on. We're going to look at verse number three. I read down through here, about uh, to verse number seven. So he comes to them, he tells them that their ministers of Christ need to be stewards. And they need to be faithful. In verse number three, it says, "But with me is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or man's judgment. Yea, I judge not of myself, for I know nothing by myself. Yet I'm not." Hereby justified, that he judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring the light, the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above, that which is written that no one be puffed up one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another, and what hast thou that thou didst not receive? <laughs> now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if I had not received it? So what he's talking about here is these people were cast in judgment, and he says, Do you not know that Christ is going to judge you? He's going to bring the light things to darkness. Now, actually, you'd like if you want to turn to Matthew. We'll look here. And uh, sometimes in the scripture, you might read something, you might, but I don't know what that's talking about. So you have to use other portions of scripture to actually bring the light to things that you just read. Uh, the Bible's a good book, but sometimes the Bible's not in detail. All the way, when you have to use other scripture, see what's saying. But if you look at Matthew chapter 7, a very familiar verse, we'll read a couple of these verses here Matthew chapter 7, verse number 1. Uh, Paul, I believe that's where he got, uh, where he was preaching at. He probably had come across this, but it says, Judge not, lest you be judged. For what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say, thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold a beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Notice here, if you, if you read Matthew 7, it gives a little bit more about what the judgments are and how we are to judge and what the Corinthian church was doing was uh, attacking and destroying each other. Right. And uh, actually they were hypocrites. And that's what it says in Matthew. And that's, that's what was going on here. What they was doing was trying to make their brother belittle and puff themselves up and, and get prideful. So he warned them about this. And he says, you know, no, not Christ is going to judge you. One day Christ is going to judge us. And though, you know, our judgment is a lot harder to do because we only can see the outward thing, the open thing, but Christ's going to reveal everything. You know, um, I'll use an example because, uh, you know, I talked to that guy that I took a picture of there in Ohio, and, uh, you know, he's strung out on drugs and homeless and whatever. You know, when you first look at him, you think, you know, this guy, you know, is a lost loser. But truthfully and honestly, he said he believed in Jesus. But, you know, he had a rough childhood growing up. And, you know, you don't know the things that people had went through right. to put them in that kind of position. So if he was a brother in Christ, if he truly was saved, I don't know that, but he said he was. But, you know, we got to be careful how we're casting judgment, how we're making the brother feel or how they're doing. And that's what was going on here. Because just because we didn't have a rough growing up, and maybe we're okay now, we're, we're living normal life, don't mean we need to cast judgment on those that we don't know nothing about. And so we have to learn uh, not to, to judge unrightly. We need to make sure that we are, you know, not trying to pull a little speck out of somebody's eye while we got a beam in our. And that's what Paul is trying to get into here is to not be a hypocrite church, not trying to destroy your brother and sister in Christ. And, uh, you know, this, this church, as we study this, uh, they had a lot of, lot of problems. And, uh, 
you know, Paul is trying to address it through here. And, uh, you know, as I study through this, and you look and see um, the carnality thing, you know, is a major thing here. And doing things in the flesh. And, uh, you know, judging unrightly is something you can do in the flesh. And the car, that's the carnal man. But look on there in uh, verse number 8. Does everybody get a verse? Does them verses that sound good? Just checking with you. Make sure everybody's still with me. Everybody with me? Yeah. All right, just one check. Y'all are quiet. I know Corey and Dave always talk to you. I know. But, uh, all right. <laughs> just make sure everybody's with me. All right, verse number 8. All right. Now you're full. Now you're rich. You have reigned as kings without us. And I look to God and you did reign that we also might reign with you. For I thank God that set forward us the apostles' last. As it were appointed to death, that we may inspect of one to the world, and to angels and to men, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. We are humble, but we are despised. Even unto the present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and buffeted, and no certain dwelling place. And labor working with our own hands, being Reviled, we're blessed, being persecuted, we suffer. Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as filth of the world, and are the all scorned of all the things under this day. I write of these, not these things to shame you, but my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet I have not many fathers, for of Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. What what Paul is saying here, and uh, you know, one thing that I found out in this, and pulled it out as a, a say a, a study through this and really look at it, and I just voice things out maybe to give to you. But you know, to think about today's time, you know, uh, you know, we all believe in the gospel. We all believe that Jesus Christ did die from the Word of God. But, you know, you think about how the Bible is true, and you think about the apostles. You know, the apostles that witness, you know, Jesus Christ coming out of the grave, you know, seeing the crucifixion and believing that, and they took that all the way to their graves. Don't you think if Jesus Christ didn't die and he didn't rise again, don't you think the apostles would have come out and said, they would lie. You know, they all got beaten. They got stoned. Sure. They was killed, martyred. Don't you think at some point they'd be like, we made this up to save themselves? Yeah. You know, they carried the gospel all the way to the grave. And, you know, you look at people nowadays, that, you know, there's no truth out there. But these people had the truth, and they carried that all the way to their death. And, uh, so that's that's another good evidence that you know Jesus Christ did die. You know these men suffered persecution, and you know Paul wrote all these letters to churches, and you know gave us the gospel through the scriptures to tell us what did happen, so we can believe that. So not only you know do we have the scriptures that they gave us, but we have their testimonies that's written recorded of how they were persecuted for what they believed and what they taught and how they was persecuted. So. You know, that's that's another evidence that, you know, there is something to this Word of God. There is something to the gospel and through their testimonies. So, you know, Paul's talking about here, and you see a lot of their suffering and persecution he's talking about. And uh, it talks about verse 8, says, Now you are rich, and you have reigned as kings and thousands. And I went to God, and you did reign, that also might reign with you. And he's talking to this church and, and churches today. Uh, that are the same, you know. We don't we don't have no idea what these apostles went through. You know, how many of y'all got beat this morning for coming to church? Mm-hmm. I'm one of you. You know, and uh, you know we're we're increased with goods and God's being good to us. And uh, if you want to, we can look in Revelation. This goes along wrong with uh, verse number eight, but it says Revelation three seventeen. Uh, Revelation three seventeen. There's a church over here 
And uh, this very familiar church it says Revelation three seventeen says, "Because thou say I'm rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor, blind and naked." So the church around three seventeen Revelation is the way of the seeing church, and uh, you know. I'm not saying anybody here is a lay of sin. But I'm saying today more than ever we have to be careful not to fall into that lukewarmness church. Because God is good to us. He has given us many blessings, you know. Uh, there, and, and oftentimes, you know, when you're on the mountaintop, you get there, but you forgot how you got on that mountaintop. We oftentimes, you know, think, you know, we're good. And you get lukewarm. And... Uh, you know, as I was saying, in comparison to the church now and the apostles, you know, there's no, and there's people persecuted out there, but oftentimes, more often than not, the church does not receive the persecution as the apostles did. And, uh, you know, the things that they had to go through, and the, you know, the thing about Paul, you know, in and out of prison all the time, and beaten, persecuted, suffered for the gospel's sake, and, uh, to, we need to be careful not to end up getting into this, you know, as we God's good to us, let's not forget God's good to us, let's not forget about God. And uh, even though we might not suffer the things, but that you know, one day I believe there's come a time when the church will suffer, but uh, you also see the church dwindle down. You know. Everybody is kinda okay. When things are going good, but when the wheels fall yeah, off, sure. you know that's when you find out who the true believers are. And uh, you know things in this country. I know this country is getting close to communism, and uh, yeah. you know we fail to see and learn things. But you know if we become communism, you know that's when you'll find the true Christians. You know because uh, they'll kill you for it, lock you up. But uh, so Paul is going through here. He's talking to this church. He's trying to just encourage them and warn them of the things that they can face. But, you know, the church, they sure didn't suffer like the apostles did. And you see over there in Revelation, you know, as he's talking about the different churches and stuff. You know, a lot of churches, even the church of Ephesus, you know, doing a lot of good things, but they forgot their first love. And we got to be careful the church not to fall in. You know, if you want to learn anything about how the church is not supposed to be, this is the book to read. And, you know, as we go through this, you'll learn a lot of things, a lot of mistakes they, they made in this church. And, uh, but, you know, Paul is teaching this church, writing the letter of love. And, uh, but just to warn them of things that could happen, but, you know, to give us... Uh, thing about the apostles, how they were treated. But we'll move on if y'all are still with me. Uh, just check. Get this pretty quick. Uh, Alright, so we'll read the rest of this and go through it. It says, For this call I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, the faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of the ways which be in Christ, as I teach every, everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as thought I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not word, but in power. What will ye shall I come unto you with a rod of love and spirit of meekness? So as you get down to the end of this uh, study for the day, I guess, here in this, uh, so Timothy was a uh, kind of disciple of Paul and uh, you know every, every I'll encourage you this but you know every Paul needs a Timothy and every Timothy needs a Paul and uh, that's something one of the responsibilities really the church you know and I'm, I'm guilty of this you know I like knocking on doors and seeing people get saved and going up the street and stuff but where I drop the ball at is the discipleship and uh, you know that I don't, I'm not a big follow-up guy. You know, if people get saved, uh, I'm just happy they're saved. 
But the thing is, we need to focus too also on that discipleship. You know, you think about when when this when Paul's talking here. You know, he's going to send someone who he's trained that he can depend on to this church, and that's Timothy. Uh, here he's called Timotheus. I don't know why he's called that, but anyways, we just call him Timothy. But anyways, one thing that is. Uh, make sure y'all awake again. All right. So anyway, so, but he's going to send someone he can depend on. This is why, you know, it's important to have that discipleship, have someone that's dependable because, you know, Paul, they're on a missionary journey. He's trying to go to every church, but right now, he cannot go to the Corinthian church. They know they probably need him there, but he's going to be able to send Timothy to this church. But, he, you know, if the Lord will, Paul's going to come, and he's going to make it there. And he knows they got problems. And uh, as he referred back to the, the thing here, the judgment, he says, now some are puffed up and thought, oh, would you come to you? And, you know, puffed up, uh, get prideful. But really, uh, you know, it's all about the power. And uh, that comes from the word dynamos uh, in Greek. And uh, it's not so much what you say, it's what you do. And uh, it says, for the kingdom of God is not a word, but in the power. Right. And uh, in verse number 21, uh, we're going to wrap it up with this. But I want to, to look at this, and there's a question in verse number 21. It says, what will you? And... Uh, you know, Paul's going through this church, writing a letter to them, trying to fix the problems they got going on. He says, what will you? You know, what What are you going to do when you read your Bible? Are you just going to read your Bible to, to just read it? Or are you going to do what it says? Are you going to take heed to what the Lord's trying to tell you? Uh, when you come to church here, do you just come to the fellowship to hear preacher walk, just get up here and, you know, preach to you? Or are you going to take what the Bible says and you're going to use it? You know, uh, Paul says here, uh, shall I come unto you with a rod, with the love of spirit meekness? And, you know, is he going to have to come to this church and correct them? Or, you know, is he going to come in the spirit of meekness? Are they going to take heed to what he's been trying to teach them as he goes through this church? You know, are they going to listen? Are they, is he going to find faithful people when he gets there? Uh, you know, are they going to be puffed up? Are they going to be belittling each other, trying to get ahead of each other? And, uh, but you know, uh, whatever you do in your Bible, you know, if you read it, if you come to church, hear preacher walk, you know, you need to do something with it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, preacher Wall might have to come in here sometime and just uh, turn her like and loose on you and get you right. <laughs> but uh, you know, what, what are you going to do with it? You know, we have to. It's not so much just we have to just read it or just to show up to church. We need to be doing something with the book. We need to, you know, if the Bible says go out to all the world and preach the gospel. You know, that's for everybody in here. You know, uh, we all need to be going out. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things in this book uh, that people probably don't like. There should be some things in here that you don't like, you know. But you need to do what the Word says. And uh, we got done a little early today, but uh, I think we kept everybody awake. And uh, anybody got any questions? Well. Did anybody read your Sunday school book this week? Didn't know what I was supposed to be talking about? <laughs> right. Well, we'll have Brother C.A. close in prayer, and then you got a little bit of time to kill. Thank you for the good signs for the rest of the